Don't date my robot, please. He's his own person! Not even gonna pretend that this wasn't the highlight of the episode for me. Though V nearly dying came close. Though not for the reasons you're thinking. Welcome, folks, to another wonderful edition of me discussing animated shows with overly aggressive shipping. Dead End was a banger. And yeah, I've been a little bit worried about this show after the last episode was kind of a premise without a plot. It gave us plenty of nightmare fuel while giving us nothing that we hadn't already guessed. But this latest episode will take the series in a direction that I loved, raise the stakes, and horrify me in all the right ways. Could we have used more Jay? Always. This episode though is way too solid for me to be mad. Unless you were shipping VNN. But at this point, y'all had to have known that the only letter she was catching was an L. I just didn't think it would happen so soon. This is just gonna be my thoughts on the episode, what I liked, what was kinda mid, and how V is about as dead as Jay is. Real tired of killing this one. <laughs> So I'm just gonna piss off my entire audience by saying that I kinda don't care for V's sacrifice at the end. Yeah, the moment itself, on its own, is good. It's checking all the character arc boxes, with V going from trying to murder Uzi, never calling her by her name, to finally calling her Uzi while telling her that she trusts her before sacrificing herself. This works. On paper. In practice, though, unless I see a body, I'm not buying it. The main reason for this is that this episode really doesn't do enough on its own to work as a proper send off for V. Dead End is juggling a lot of stuff. Between the sole survivor, who I just googled now is called Alice, Raptors, Tessa telling Anne about Earth, and worrying about what to do with Uzi, Sin hijacking Uzi, ships, V spends most of this episode kind of just chilling before biting the bullet at the end. This lack of prevalence makes it feel like there isn't enough build up for the show to actually follow through and kill her, as this scene does complete an arc. But it's one that we've never seen V really internalize or mull over. It's been background noise, which is kind of V's whole bag. As if I can fault this show for anything, is that it kind of struggles fitting V into the bigger story on a similar level as N and Uzi. She's there, she's fun. But it always feels like the things that make V relevant are the things that happened rather than the things that are happening. She knew about the solver before anyone else did, but it didn't say shit. We went into her mind and she barely talked. V isn't a bad character, but because of not wanting to spoil the mysteries, V ends up being the person who we never really get an in-depth look at. She's never really given the time to process what she feels for N, or really deal with her fear of Uzi becoming another sin, making her dying right here feel not as impactful as I think it could have been. But it also leads me to not really believe that she's dead here. We'll probably get more of her later, as even worst case scenario that she did in fact get turned into Raptor Chow, this episode establishes that Jay and the other Mergens are being cloned by the company. Company. So even if we lose this one, another version could always pop up later down the road. Though the real nightmare scenario for me is that a Visa reassembler core fused with the other ones in the oven, as that would just be horrifying and a fitting final boss for the season. I do like the scene, I think all the moves are really dope, but overall, it's cool, but I'm not convinced whatsoever. Moving on, the rest of the episode slaps. <laughs> Immediately. Like really, I don't have anything to complain about here. Like always, this show is really fucking good at directing horror. Even if it's not keeping you up at night scary, it nails tension and suspense. From the opening shot of a drone hiding from a Jurassic Park homage, the show is immediately able to suck you in. The dark confined spaces, the looming danger in the distance, but it also creates an active goal of the girl trying to save her friend, only for them both to meet the same fate. This show is really good at these horror moments, as it sets these micro goals so that even if we don't know who the person is, we're able to become immediately invested in their situation and want them to come out okay. AKA, we don't want them to just immediately die. This isn't something that the show always does right. There are moments where the robots are just kind of crash test dummies for creative kills. But when this show wants to lean into horror and ambiance, it immediately is at the top of its game. With this episode probably being one of the show's strongest, striking the balance between funhouse horror, actual character moments, and plot per Progression. There's some stuff that I feel like some fans will not care for, like how this episode immediately starts and diffuses the Mexican standoff. It's a bit anticlimactic. With Doll, who went from going to extreme lengths and risks to get her hands on the Roach Key, to start working with Tessa, only for her to immediately take it back and just make a beeline for the elevator by herself, it kind of calls into question why she went to all the effort in the first place. It also did explain how Uzi's team just immediately teleported to the new location. But for all that, like, minor nitpicks, the episode is more than a 
able to make the best of the situation it creates. By using the narrative speed bump that is the raptor lady and the deceased to set new stakes and conflict for the characters. As Tessa reveals that Sin may have been stopped at the dinner party all those years ago, but the absolute solver has gone on to destroy Earth, converting it into a black hole with the infographic implying that the solver has spread to other planets presenting N, perfect golden retriever that he is, with a moral dilemma, as Tessa tells him that she needs his help to save the planet by potentially having to kill Uzi. Something that eats them, but also ends up bringing the two of them closer together, as his desire to save her is only increased by the arrival of this ticking clock. N is willing to go so far as to chop off her hand if it means keep her safe from the solver's control, which, great, horrifying, terrible, it's also going to be immediately undone by the fact that these robots can regenerate limbs. So I'm not going to freak out too much about that. But there is just a new sense of desperation to N's actions that just goes so well with his perpetual optimism and kindness. Him giving his own mutilator a pep talk is so adorable, you kind of just forget how fucked up it is. Tessa is also proving to be an incredibly strong addition to the cast. She is aggressively Australian, and is able to bounce between having everything and nothing under control, and it is a blast to watch. She is able to go from fun big sister to massive villain vibes at the drop of a hat, as she pushes N to help her stop Uzi. The choice to not show Tessa's face is leading to a lot of creepy and fun moments where we just see the reflection of her helmet, which adds all sorts of creep factor. Also, for those who don't know, this season of Murder Drones is only about like 8 episodes. So while this isn't the penultimate episode, it does everything it needs to to raise the stakes moving forward. I especially love how Uzi abusing her power is no longer the freebie it has previously been shown to be. Yeah, she was turning into a monster, but she seemed to immediately just have a handle on that. But now, it's causing her to turn into sin. The absolute solver is spreading, and suddenly nobody is okay, and everyone is scared as, if this keeps happening, N and Tessa are gonna have problems. The comedy of this episode is on point, we're getting closer and closer to the answers to the mysteries, though I would say personally, I'm still kind of apathetic to the whole Uzi's mom situation. Situation. To me, it's kind of just the excuse the story needs for why Uzi's infected. The running mystery of what happened to her, why was she making conspiracy boards, what is this sudden connection between her and Sin, it's all just kind of lackluster to me. It's like the one mystery in the show where every time it's brought up, I'm just like, okay. Like, the only real curious part to me right now is the timeline. As a butcher lady mentions that Uzi's mom, Nori, had yellow eyes when she abandoned the facility, but all the flashbacks we've seen of her have shown purple like Uzi. Which means if she escaped the facility before she met her husband and had Uzi, then that would mean that at some point she was hijacked by Sin, but was able to fix or suppress it till whatever happened to her happened. Like, I feel like we just have all, like, the base facts of what we need to know, yet I just don't really feel the engagement or the pull, like, oh, we need to find out what happened to Uzi's mom. It's just, we get the gist. And the ticking clock of stopping Sin and getting some answers about what the hell that thing is, is more than enough to drive the plot forward, so having this other mystery that's just gonna be like the same answers, just feels superfluous. I understand why it's important to Uzi, but the mystery of the mom is wrapped up in so many more engaging mysteries, that it just, you know, unless there's some crazy reveal, I'm kinda of the opinion that we could've just cut this thing and lost very little that couldn't have been explained in other ways. But that's just my take. Also, we'll be giving them their own video, but N and Uzi continue to be adorable and I am winning watching these adorable idiots blush and grow closer. N is the best. He is the highlight of this show, and Uzi, when she's allowed to be the anxiety-ridden teen that she is, is just peak comedy. This isn't the deepest relationship I've ever liked, but it is giving me all the serotonin, as Uzi is risking her sanity to save this man, and no matter what happens, N is always willing to give her a hand, which she definitely needs right now. Overall, I really like this episode. It's one of the better balanced ones of this season. It has scares, jokes, and uncut off. Awesome. While I think there are some areas where it could have taken some steps to hit harder, I'm not going to pretend that this episode didn't slap and I didn't enjoy myself from start to finish. Doll is still kind of just there, but that scene of her releasing the beast is awesome. We'll find out soon enough how the absolute solver will solve all these many competing plot threads, and I cannot wait for it to happen, as this show is just my brand of unhinged, and I love it for that. Thank you all for watching, this has been Sarcastic Chorus. Like, share, and subscribe to be updated on whenever I release that Uzi XN video. I've been planning to do one for a while, but with it looking inevitable these days, this is as good a time as any to make one. So stay tuned, love you all, peace out.